So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Hope you are all doing well and staying safe. So welcome to the first session of the course, Quantitative Data Analysis. I am Mariam Shreif, a Senior Petroleum Engineering student at the Lebanese American University, and I'll be your moderator for today's session. So our session today, as I said, is about quantitative data analysis presented by a proficient distinctive speaker. I'm sure his participation will avail all attendees. With that, I advise you to give your full attention to his interesting and informative session today. So let me begin by introducing our guest speaker for today, Dr. Yasser El Shaib. Dr. El Shaib had graduated from Cairo University in 1990 with a degree in mining engineering. He also holds a PhD degree from Nancy School of Mines, whereby he contributed to the fuzzy, fuzzy logic to geotechnical, uh, geotechnical, uh, geotechnical risk assessment of some ancient tombs at the Valley of Kings in Egypt. Since 2006, Dr. El Shaib has been significantly, significantly engaging in setting the euro mediterranean policies and dialogues on higher education, research, innovation, and culture, which is considered, which is considered a focal point of many euro mediterranean programs in Egypt. And also, he presided many senior official meetings with the euro mediterranean framework. Currently, Dr. El Shaib is a professor at the American University in Cairo. His lecturing and research content varied between rock engineering, rock mechanics, data analytics, and cultural, cultural heritage management. So please help me welcome Dr. El Shaib. So Doctor, we are a pleasure to have you here with us today. And on a final note before starting, if you have any question, please feel free to drop it down in the Q&A section. And of course, we will try to answer as much questions as possible. Now for the unanswered questions, we will sure take note of them and try to address them in future Q&A sessions. Without any further ado, hope you guys enjoy this session and uh, Dr. El Shaib, the mic is yours. Thank you very much, Mariam. Uh, and um, again, I wish you and all the Lebanese uh, good health and prosperity in these difficult times that you're passing through. Um, good morning and good evening, everyone. I'm Yasser El Shaib, as mentioned by Mariam. And um, I will be uh, taking you to a journey, to a fun journey, I hope, uh, during the next um, seven sessions or six sessions on uh, quantitative data analysis. This is the first one. And uh, just before we start, I thought about giving you a, a small teaser. Uh, yesterday, Dr. Ahmed El Garhi have sent me, um, has proposed actually to send me the, um, the registration list for this uh, course. That is today about, yeah, we have 1,682 people who have registered in this, um, in this webinar. I believe that not all of them will be really attending, but anyway, I mean, this is the, this is the registration, uh, registration form. And um, you will remember that you, will, you, will, you were asked for your email, for your name, for your date of birth, the country where you're residing, occupation, and, and some other questions afterwards. Um, in the interest of just showing what, what is it about, what, what is this course is about, I actually thought about um, doing a rapid um, analysis of the data. And I just show you, I will show you here some, um, some, some outputs. So this is, for, a, for, a, for example, the distribution of the countries. Where the people that have registered for this uh, course come from? So most of them come from probably Egypt, uh, India, we have a lot of people and you can see the, the distribution of this green color from and, and the legend is here. So we have people from actually all the six continents in, the, in, in this world. Um, another way of seeing the same data is just to, to draw a bar, um, yeah, a bar chart like this, where you have Egypt, India, Nigeria, Algeria, Pakistan, Cameroon, Iraq, and, and so on. Uh, participating in this course, and I'm, I'm sorry I will not be able to, to mention all the, all the names. And then I started doing like um, uh, the date of birth, distribution of date of birth. What, what, what is the, the, the distribution of, of the age group of the, of, the, of the people that are attending this course? And we will see that the majority of the people are coming from 90, we were born in 1998, uh, 1997 as well, 1999, around this, uh, this, the, the, this period. And we notice here that um, we were laughing about this before we start, before we just start here that some of you have mentioned that their date of birth was in the year 2020. Of course, it's a mistake, definitely, or um, it's, um, it's a typo, but it's, it shows as well that usually the data that we work with are not perfect. It's very, very, very rare that you will find a data that is perfect, that is 
all coherent, all correct that you will, uh, that you can work on, uh, that you can work with. Um, usually you have some errors like, like those ones. Um, but we will speak about this afterwards. Uh, specialization, you, most of the people here comes from petroleum or petroleum related uh, specialization. So we have the marriage, more than 1000 people coming from a petroleum engineering specialization followed by geology and geophysics, which is also related to petroleum. Like we can call it earth science uh, in general. Then we have like 232 people who have declared themselves as others, not, uh, uh, not geology, not petroleum, not mechanical, not chemistry. So others, and then I looked into other, uh, yeah, this is another way to look into the, the, the same data. So petroleum engineering is a big uh, square here, then geology and geophysics, then others is uh, another square. Um, then if we look into others, we will see that some, many, of, many of the people didn't mention what is their specialization. Uh, and then we have a lot of specialization here. And then we can sometimes, I mean, playing with the data, we can just exclude the null and you have a lot of people coming from chemical engineering, petroleum engineering, geology, petrochemical, mining engineering. Yeah, I mean, a lot of different uh, backgrounds, but most, of, but most of them are more or less earth science. Most of them are more or less around petroleum and mining and maybe chemical engineering. Um, when it comes to, um, if you are a student, if you, the, the profile of the person, if you are a student or a graduate and unemployed or graduate and employed, this is the, 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 the distribution. And again, uh, we can see here that students are the majority, um, graduates and unemployed, which is uh, a bit uh, alarming, is um, 428 people. And then uh, 256 are graduate and employed uh, already, in, maybe in their mid-career. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, we can go on and on and on and on, but this is just, uh, just to show, I mean, I'll come back to this, uh, uh, to this software, to this tool afterwards, and I'll come back to this data afterwards in details. But it was just a way to show you that this is from a simple, a very simple thing that you have, uh, that you have already filled in uh, on a website. This is what you can obtain. This is what we can see. This is what we can know about you as a, as a group, of course, it's not uh, as, as individual. And this is what's, what's happening actually now, nowadays in the world. I mean, a lot of data are being collected. A lot of data are being analyzed. A huge amount of data is moving around computers from uh, somewhere to another. And you probably have heard about a lot of uh, big companies investing huge amount of money in um, um, building data warehouses. It's the, 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 the places where we store the data, where you have huge uh, hard, hard drives and um, you just store the data in them. And then comes people like me or hopefully people like you afterwards and start analyzing those data. And this goes for all types of information, all types of data that we have in the world, from uh, so, uh, social, social data to uh, petroleum data to geology to, I mean, everything, everything is, is being analyzed now. Even Facebook, I mean, the clicks that you click on Facebook or on Twitter, we can analyze them and we can get information out of them. Now, let's get one step back and start uh, uh, the course as, as I officially wanted it, wanted it to start. And um, here is the presentation that we, can, we will go through uh, for the next uh, 50 minutes or so. Um, my, um, actually the, 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 the driver behind the quantitative data analysis is that uh, People, since the beginning of humanity, since the beginning of technology, since the beginning of knowledge and, and thinking and reasoning, people started being interested in numbers. We were always assigning numbers to, to things. Uh, days, the week is seven days. The year is 12 months. We are in the year 220 or in the year 550. We will build uh, three pyramids or we will build uh, five columns. I have two sons and uh, I need to give you five uh, pieces of gold in exchange of, uh, of service. Numbers were always around us uh, uh, since the beginning of humanity, since the beginning of our uh, mod modern time. Um, let me start in a, yeah, in a presentation mode. And um, it was, I mean, we, we started thinking that everything that's happening around us in this world is maybe uh, random at the beginning, uh, 
uh, until people, for example, uh, until ancient Egyptians realized, ancient Egyptians realized that, that the year is 365 days, it was thought that this flood of the Nile is coming haphazardly. But then with observation, we became to understand that it's not haphazardly, it's actually a systematic way. And then they started counting the days and then they realized that the days are 365. And then came um, some, uh, um, some uh, astronomers and started thinking that um, are we, uh, is everything around us in this world is going haphazardly or everything has an order for it? And this is actually um, a very interesting way of thinking. I mean, um, can we think of our behavior, for example, as a random behavior? My behavior as a person, as a human, is it random or is it following a, a specific order? Is it following a specific equation maybe or a specific pattern maybe? This is an interesting question that came into philosophy in, back maybe in the years uh, 200 BC. And people started thinking that, well, un unless we have specific equations and specific patterns for anything, then we shall consider it that it's being uh, haphazardly or random as, as we call it in, in, in modern day. And I'll give you some examples here. Archimedes, before Archimedes, people didn't know about flutability, people didn't know about uh, specific gravity or density. And uh, before him, it was considered as something that is happening. But then he came to a conclusion that there is actually an equation that is governing uh, the, 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 the movement of objects into water and how the amount of water that is displaced from uh, um, uh, uh, um, uh, um, a square or a, or a barrel, the, the amount of water is, that is displaced is actually the same amount of, the, has the same volume of the object that is submerged in that, uh, in, in that uh, volume of water. So it became an equation. It didn't, I mean, it turned from being uh, um, an observation to an equation that will govern the, the behavior of that um, of, of that element. Then uh, we, we have also uh, the, the, the second example, and, and, and I know that a lot of people these days are, are questioning actually, is it a myth or is it reality that an apple fell on the head of Isaac Newton and then he started thinking about gravity and uh, he came with all the uh, uh, Newton laws and, and, and so on afterward. But nevertheless, I mean, it doesn't, mat it doesn't matter if it's a, a myth or a reality. What's What's actually important for me is that before him, the behavior of the apples falling on the ground was more or less observation, was more or less random. But then after him, it became something that has an order for it. And we can, I mean, actually, we can, we can have this equation and we can uh, uh, work with that equation. We can predict, actually. The, the behavior of that apple if it will fall um, afterwards. But this is very uh, preliminary, of course. I mean, another, another example is um, Ibn al-Haysam, the, the, uh, the Arab scholar who, were actually, who was actually in, in Egypt, and he discovered the theory of light, the optics. He is the father of optics in, uh, all around the world. Before him as well, there were a lot of myths that are going around the lights and how people see things and how we see light and, and so on and so forth. But then after him, he set the rules for the, the optics, and he said the, the equations for that. And people after him were able, I mean, until today, we are able to photograph things. You are able to see me now using some of the theories of, uh, of Ibn al-Haysam at, 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 at that time. So this is, for me, the transformation from observation, maybe from uh, things that are completely un understandable, um, unknown, random to an ordered thing that we can expect, that we can predict, which is also more very, very, very much important. I'm, I'm projecting here some of the equations you engineers, you engineering students have definitely seen before. Uh, of course, the, the famous equation of Einstein in the beginning of the 20th century, uh, energy is mass multiplied by the speed of light squared two. This is the, the, the equation of uh, gravity, of, 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 mute, uh, of, of force of gravity between two objects. And this is the general equation for the gases 
the relationship between the, the, the pressure and the volume and the, uh, the gas constant and the temperature. So this is an equation that will tell you what to expect as a volume if you have a pressure and if you have a temperature for a certain gas, for example. Before having that equation, it was completely haphazard. And sometimes we find also equations like this. So this is the behavior of, uh, uh, of an object, and the behavior of an object is following four different, different rules. So if you are in stage one, you, you, you follow uh, rule one, stage two, you follow uh, rule two and three and four. And then people started thinking that, do we, are we really, uh, do we really have an equation that will govern the movement of the universe, everything that is in the universe that is, that is moving on. And mind you, there are actually certain uh, uh, um, uh, scientists or, I mean, Nobel Prize uh, winners in, the, in, in recent years that are doing a lot of research on, uh, on that equation. Um, how to define, how to find an equation that governs everything that is in this, um, in, in, in this universe. Um, is it possible to find an equation that governs everything that is in this universe? Is it, is it possible to find an equation, for example, that will tell you what would be the behavior of Yasser tomorrow or after tomorrow? Or is it random? It depends on, 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 on many other things. Actually, we don't know. I mean, there are those scientists and there are the other th scientists that, that, that I personally like who, who think usually of, um, of patterns and, um, and, um, and, 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 and numbers. Um, I know that I'm, I'm submerging you a lot with uh, a lot of equations and a lot of, uh, um, a, a lot of numbers, but I can assure you that we will not use those equations in our, in our course, because I, I know that sometimes mathematics, not, not everyone likes mathematics, but just to show you that there are people that actually interested in those questions, there are people that actually are searching for those, uh, for, for answers for, the, for, for those. Um, well, this is also another, uh, another experiment. When we looked, when we used to look into the, the sky and, and look into the, the, the stars and try to find, is there a pattern that governs those stars or they are just randomly uh, uh, existing in the, in, in, in the sky? And we didn't know at, at the beginning. And then with time, people started saying that, well, maybe, you know, I can see um, a, a bear in the sky and the beer, this is the, 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 the foot, this is the tail, this is the head, and I would call it uh, Ursa Major. And then other people saw another pattern and they call it the lion. And then other people saw, I don't know what, and they call it many, many, many other things. It's just a way to, to, to look into patterns that are in the sky and try to, to relate those patterns to things that we know uh, in our, um, in, in our life. Um, I will go to my, I think it's my final example of, of showing how things have developed. Um, people looked also into nature and found that there are uh, uh, green leaves like this. And those green leaves are very interesting in, in, in shape. And then came an Italian guy, Fibonacci, and he developed actually uh, um, a series that can predict, that can simulate if you wish, the, the, this shape by itself. So you see it here. This shape is here, is based on what we call the Fibonacci sequence. That is much like this, uh, uh, this, this pattern that we can observe in, uh, in, in nature, actually. So people are actually, I mean, we actually are interested in trying to, to have an equation, maybe, I mean, maybe I can have an equation for the pattern of this uh, uh, green leaf. So I can predict when, how will it develop next time? How will it develop tomorrow or the day after tomorrow? And if I can have the sequence, if I can have this equation, then I can know uh, if, I will, uh, um, if I will plant a tree like this, how would it look like after 10 years or after 20 years? And this is something that humanity has always been very much interested, knowing what will happen in the future. How can we predict what will happen in the future? And this is also, I mean, if you have an equation, then you can know how things can happen after a certain period of time. But if you don't have an equation, then how can you do it? How can you, uh, how can, can, you, can, can you predict it? 
Um, before I move on, um, I actually asked my friend and, uh, and colleague, uh, Dr. Ahmed al garhi to develop some, uh, some polls to um, maybe to measure your, your attention, to grasp your attention more to, the, um, to, what we are, uh, to, to what we are doing here. So Dr. Ahmed, if you can please launch the first poll. Well, I know that this is maybe a difficult question, but maybe you can, uh, and definitely I know that you can search on them all for Google and, or, or whatever. Just, I'll give you just, uh, uh, let's have 30 seconds to, to answer all those questions, please. Or let's say 45 seconds. Let's have 45 seconds to answer those questions. Um, if you know about the four forces of the universe. And I can see the numbers moving on. So most of the people uh, say that it's gravitational, electrostatic, electromagnetic, and nuclear forces. Shall we give another 15 seconds to a minute? Okay, well, let's, uh, Dr. Ahmed, let's stop at the mark of one minute. And then we can look into the, into the results. Yes, please, let's stop here. Let's end the poll here. And um, I can see that 62% um, of the people, that's 66 people, persons, have clicked on gravitational, electrostatic, electromagnetic, and nuclear forces, which is unfortunately not the right answer. The right answer is the first one. Um, the four forces that we have in the universe are gravitational forces, are electromagnetic forces, are weak atomic forces that governs the... the the, the attraction between the quarks and the protons, and then um, uh, uh, the strong atomic forces, which is the, um, the, 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 the attraction between the nucleus and the electrons, which, is, which actually we use to, to, to extract nuclear, um, nuclear uh, power. So I'm sorry, uh, only 32 people, 30% 30 of the, of the um, answers were right. And um, okay, we, I mean, I hope that you will go online and search for this question, search for those forces. What are those forces? And again, mind you that those four forces that we have in, in the universe, we have equations for um, every one of them. Still, there are some errors that we are not able to explain. And this is why we actually wanted to work on uh, data analysis. Let's move on. Uh, Let's move on. I don't know how to take this off. Okay. So, okay, we spoke about Fibonacci. And then, um, yeah, I mean, people, uh, as I said before, started looking into patterns. And then when we looked into patterns, we wanted to fit those patterns to, to certain things. So you have here um, in, in this graph, for example, you have points, observations that you have observed about something. Could be, uh, for example, temperature. So temperature day one, temperature day two, temperature day three, or month one, month two, month three, month four, month five, month, or week one, week two. One. And then you was able to draw this green line or this red line that is joining those, uh, those, those numbers together. The, actually, when, when you do this, you are starting to do data analysis. You are you're starting to analyze this data and trying to find a pattern for it. So by drawing the red line or by drawing the green line, whatever, I mean, whatever the one that we, I mean, you have here also green line and red line. We have here uh, as well a red line that is simulating the data. The main objective for this is first to understand how, how the data is behaving, how the temperature is behaving. For example, if this is temperature, how the temperature is behaving from day one to day two to day N. And then to be able to predict maybe in the, in, the, in the future. If you look into this, I mean, my, my son does this uh, a lot of time. Um, if you consider that this is the price of a stock, the, the Apple stock, for example, you go to the stock market, what's the price today? It's $80, tomorrow it's $90, 90, uh, 100, and, and so on. If you will be able to draw a line or a curve that will simulate the movement of this, uh, um, of, the, of, the, of the price of that stock, you can, of course, understand the behavior of that stock, but you can also look into the future. So if you want to look into the future, will the price of the stock go up? Will it go down? 
this is an interesting uh, interesting thing to do and this is something that we always i mean we do a lot of these those things in data analysis and this is why maybe this data analysis was uh, was um, was invented then came another group of of scientists um, by the year maybe uh, zero uh, during the greco rome the greek the greek uh, era um, and started saying that there is actually a law that governs all the movement of um, everything that is natural, which is, which was actually the beginning of statistics, beginning of probability, beginning of uh, of looking into randomness. And um, for those of you who have studied statistics or uh, uh, or data analysis maybe before. You've seen definitely this 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 curve, which is called the bell curve. We call it sometimes the Gaussian uh, curve. We call it the normal distribution curve, and we have found actually that this normal distribution curve it governs a lot of natural phenomena that exist in the world. For example, the uh, the one thousand six hundred and eighty one people that have registered for this course, if we will measure their height in centimeters or in inches from from tip to toe you will find that the height of the people is following a normal distribution if we will measure the weight of those 1681 people we find that is also following a normal distribution and we came to a conclusion actually down um, i think it was in the year uh, during the renaissance it was maybe during the year 1200 and 1300 uh, AD that any um, any natural data should be following uh, a normal distribution providing that we have enough data or enough statistics about it so providing that we have a large uh, amount of data a large a large uh, sample of the of the, of, 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 the, of the population or a large population and this uh, made us believe or made us think that um, okay, if we will know the the distribution of the of the of the of the of the population that we have, or the phenomena that we are studying, then we can expect or we can predict the probability of the next time that we do. If we will know what is the normal distribution, uh, we call it the probability distribution function for the height of the people that are in this course. I can tell you with an uh, amount of certainty that can go up to 80% or 90% that the next one, the next person that will register for this course will have a height of so-and-so and will have a weight of so-and-so. So this is the way that we can, that we can use such, uh, uh, such thing. And, then, and again, this is why we are always interested to know the distribution of the data that we are uh, working working with, and we will come back to this later during the during the course. Even even chaos. I mean, uh, maybe in the 1970s, 1960s, 1980s, uh, people start. I mean, scientists in the world started interested in uh, chaos theory. What we, what is called now the chaos theory, and the chaos theory is, is simply um, if you have a um, I don't know how to how to call this in English, but um, I can give you an, another example. If you have um, uh, the, um, a lightning that is striking uh, the Earth during uh, during winter time or during the a rainy day, this lightning is following uh, it doesn't fall on, doesn't follow uh, any order. But mind you, some people were able to define a function for that. Uh, uh, for for the striking of, of of lightnings, and we are able today to maybe predict with a with a fair amount of accuracy uh, when the next uh, strike uh, um, lightning will happen and how uh, and how and how it happened then um, comes um, other um, other other people and this is very interesting uh, very interesting uh, branch of science that uh, i would like that if you are interested in to go and and to look into it which is called the fractals and the fractals is the repetition of uh, uh, the natural phenomena and the beginning is as you see here you have a simple uh, uh, a simple um, curve or a simple pattern and then you will you are repeating the same pattern over and over again so you are repeating the same pattern here and it's here and it's here and it's here and it's here and then 
for every uh, line, you are repeating the same pattern. You, so you, you substitute the line by the pattern, the same pattern again. And then at the end, you find, you find this. At the end, you find something like this. This is the same pattern all over again. This is the same pattern all over and all over and all over again. It's, it's a way, again, to simulate nature. And um, if you look into the internet uh, on Google and you write fractal images, for example, you will be amazed that there are uh, a lot of uh, um, a lot of natural images that you, if you look at them, they will they will seem to be natural. They seem to be real, for trees, for wood, for whatever, maybe desert as well. But um, if you read uh, behind the lines, you will find that those are fabricated uh, um, images out of fractals. So you have a small entity, and then you repeat this entity like one thousand time. 2,000 times, and then when you repeat it, you will get this complex, um, compl complex pattern. And fractals, I mean, it's proven that fractals are in a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of things, and we can actually, we actually use uh, uh, fractals for um, image processing sometimes, for image compression sometimes, and, uh, and, 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 and so on. Um, the, the the last example maybe that I will I will I will look into is the uh, the genome, the genes. I mean we know that we have um, 32 chromosomes, 64 uh, sorry chromosomes, and those 64 chromosomes are composed of uh, a series of uh, amino acids, and those amino acids are repeated in in a certain pattern, and we call this pattern gene. And then those genes are com constituting the chromosome, and then the chromosome is constituting the the, the nucleus of the of the uh, of the cell, and the cells are constituting our bodies and everything that is around everything that is alive that is around us. So the base is actually uh, small portions of amino acids, and the pattern of those amino acids is what we call the genes, and uh, the genes are actually controlling everything. I mean. Uh, my knowledge is controlled by those genes. My behavior is controlled by those genes. My uh, color is controlled by those genes. My everything that I do is controlled by those genes. So the actually the 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 the, the way that we think about it in, 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 scientifically is that if we will understand the the pattern and the sequence of those genes, will we be able to fabricate, between brackets, uh, uh, fabricate uh, a, a perfect human being that understands everything. If I will know, and actually we use this in medicine these days, um, we may you, uh, read about it in the, in the newspaper that we have discovered the gene that is causing the disease of so-and-so. If we have discovered the gene that is causing this disease, will we be able to, uh, to look into this gene and maybe change it, maybe twist it, maybe take it out, maybe change it with something else, and then cure people from that disease? Is it possible? Theoretically, yes, it is possible. And theoretically, yes, it is uh, possible to actually to, to fabricate some of those genes. But um, we don't have enough data yet to, uh, to analyze such things, to go into uh, such experiments. Uh, we do this, I mean, uh, people who work in gene editing, they do this in animals, on animals, sometimes on plants. Actually, we do it on plants since many, uh, uh, many, many years, but we, we don't do it yet on human beings because human beings are very, very much complex than any other uh, species that, that exist in this world. But to, to, to come to the, to, 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 to the truth, to, to, the, to, the, to the essence of the, of the thing, it's the same thing. It's how can you uh, collect data about those genes and then you analyze the data about those genes and then you come to a conclusion. And another question or another branch that people will ask, uh, can we have, I mean, do we have an equation for those genes? I mean, can I have an equation that is called f of x equal to one uh, uh, one x one plus uh, sorry a x one plus b x two plus c x three plus d x four, and if I will collect this equation, will I be able to know the, the the composition of the gene of Yasser or of anyone or 
or for someone who is living in Egypt or for someone who is living in, uh, in the United States. Are genes uh, uh, changeable? I mean, are genes, are genes uh, different? I mean, my genes, are, are they different from the genes of Dr. Ahmed? Uh, yes, there are, there are differences, but how can, we, how can we know that they are different? How can we treat that different? How can we uh, take, take benefit of that different? This is, this is actually a branch of science that is working now and that is very much interesting. And it's all about data analysis because we discovered that with the complexity of the system of the genes, for example, or the complexity of a lot of systems that are around us, we are not able to, to develop equations for everything. So what we do is that we rely on data, we look into the data, we observe the data, we take advantage of what we have observed, we reason about what we've observed, and then we start uh, uh, building conclusions and prediction, forecasting for the, for, for the future. And this is something that, for example, has happened during the past three or four months. What happened during the three or four, or four past months is that we have, we have humanity have, stru have been struck with the uh, uh, outbreak of the coronavirus, and no one knew what is this coronavirus. So uh, um, scientists, I mean doctors uh, around the world, started studying the gene of the virus and like looking into the virus. What's the RNA of the virus and how it's composed and uh, and why is it attaching to? Why is it attacking the um, the, the respiratory system? Why is it? Trans transmitting from, from one person to another. Why, why, why? A lot of whys. While other people, like myself, for example, we were looking actually into the final output of that virus. Number of cases, number of deaths. Number of cases, number of deaths. Day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, day seven, day eight, day eight, and so on. Country one, country two, country three, country four, country five. And we started building patterns for that, uh, uh, for, for, for that virus. And uh, uh, interesting enough, we were able actually to find the, the pattern for, that, for the spread out of that virus, which is not that different from the pattern of spreading of any other virus that is in the, in, in, in the world. And we were able actually to predict. I mean, people were able to predict that in Egypt, the peak of the, uh, uh, um, of the epidemic will be on day so-and-so with um, uh, an error, a margin of error of one to two days. And then it will disappear by the day so-and-so. Uh, so do we have an equation for that? No, we don't have an equation for that, but we have a pattern for that. We have data for that. We, can, we will be able to, uh, to, to, to predict it. So the, the idea that I'm putting here is that observing historical data, observing data, usually gives you much, much, much faster information than trying to understand the underlying equation of a certain phenomena. We could have spent years and years trying to understand the equation of the uh, contraction of the uh, coronavirus for a person X or a person Y. But if we look into uh, into the same problem from a data point of view and look into the spread of the virus, how it is spread and the pattern of its spread, then we will be able, I mean, we are able to understand it much better than and much faster than uh, than, than before. Now, I will ask um, Dr. Ahmed to launch the poll number two, which is not related at all to what we are seeing here. Yeah, this is an interesting question. Um, can we mathematically predict the relationship between the number of people drowning in a swimming pool in a given year and the number of pins Nicolas Cage, the actor, appears in, in the same year? Mathematically, can we predict that? We'll give it um, a minute as well. Well, I see that a lot of people are, are much believer in, in, in mathematical relations. Three seconds, two seconds, one second, and off we go. So um, 58 people, I mean, uh, well, 
I, I wouldn't say that it's, um, it's a clear-cut result. 58% um, of the people believe that we can predict mathematically the relationship between the number of people drowning in a swimming pool, and 42% say that we cannot. Um, well, if we were actually in a, in, a, in a lecture hall, I would have been much, very much interested to know from those who think that we can predict how. How can we predict? Um, I will not answer the question now. I, mean, I, mean, I will not give you the, the right answer. I will just, we'll just move on, and I think that we will have the, the, the answers afterwards. So let's, uh, let's just move on. Now, um, do we really need equations? This is actually what, what, I, started, uh, what I started discussing, that uh, maybe sometimes we think that we don't need equations to, to predict something. And this is uh, the power of correlation or a power of patterns. So we have here um, uh, um, variable x and variable y, and the variable x and y, we draw them on a, on a, on a, on a graph, of, on, a, on a paper graph, and then we find that those are the points. And we see that whenever, uh, 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 whenever a variable x increases, then variable y uh, increases as well. So if I want to predict the value of y um, in this point, I can. If I want to, do, to, to, to expect the value of, of, of x at this point that is outside this graph, actually I can because I have here a pattern that I can, that I can use. Um, we call this correlation. Uh, uh, and correlation in mathematical terms means the um, the underlying mathematical uh, uh, relationship between two uh, two independent two two variables. Uh, I would not say independent or dependent because this is a big uh, a, a big discussion afterwards. And um, we have what we call positive correlation. So variable x increase, variable y incre variable x increases, variable y increases, and then we have negative correlation, which is variable x increases and variable y decreases with with, with that. So using this, you can actually predict. Uh, uh, variables depending on, uh, on others. I will come back to this actually in the next lecture, but I just want to say something that we have discovered uh, that if we will observe data, we will find a certain level of correlation between everything that is happening in the world. And maybe this is the answer to, your, uh, to, to the question that we, had, uh, that we had before. Look into those interesting correlations. Per capita consumption of mozzarella cheese is correlating to the civil engineering doctorate awarded. You may think that civil engineering doctorates award, the number of civil engineering doctorates awarded in the world or in, in a certain state in the year 2008 is a number, is a certain number. And the per capita consumption of mozzarella cheese is also a certain number. Um, Strangely speaking, and I, and I say strangely, I, I mean to say strangely speaking, we have found that there is a correlation between those, uh, th those two. And um, uh, no, this is not the answer to the question that was before. This is the a correlation between the Japanese passenger cars sold in the US. It's correlating with the suicide by crashing of a motor vehicle. It's correlating to each other. And um, actually, uh, the, the question of the poll uh, about the number of people drowning in a swimming pool and the number of films that Nicolas Cage have appeared in, is actually, there is actually a, a, a perfect correlation between those two, uh, those two variables. Um, now, can we call, um, I mean, in, in, math, in mathematics, in data analysis, we have a very uh, important uh, quote that we always repeat to ourselves and to each other, which says, correlation is not causation. I mean, um, if we have found that the Japanese passenger cars that are sold in the U.S. is correlated to the suiciding, the number of uh, suiciding by crashing of motor vehicle, this does not mean that this variable is the cause of that variable. It's correlated, yes. And as I said before, everything in this life is correlated to anything else with a certain, uh, with a certain degree. And we will come back to correlation afterwards. But does, it does not mean that it is actually uh, uh, the cause for that. And here we have some, uh, uh, some comics 
uh, coming from the internet, of course. Um, and it's that it says that what's uh, freaking us out is that we found that a correlation between owning cats and being struck by uh, lightning. So does this mean that if I get rid of my cats, I will not be struck by lightning? Is it the cause? No, it's not. And the, uh, the, the other one where you have the, the, the people in the, in, the, in the meeting room and the, the, the CEO of the company is saying that uh, we found that uh, correlation, uh, this correlation of the, in the data that shaved heads is correlated with higher sales. So he says, everyone take a razor. Of course, it's a joke, but it shows that sometimes we are actually fooled by the data, and sometimes we may misthink of the data. I mean, you can read in the newspaper, and I read this in the, in the, in the newspaper every, every other week, that uh, having a bold, uh, bold hair uh, is... Um, I mean, scientists have proven, have, have shown that study in, I don't know which university, have shown that there is, I mean, those who have uh, bald hair, they are um, successful in life. Okay, well, why not? Um, those who have uh, two wives, if you live in a, in a country where, where you are permitted to have two wives, those who have two wives are uh, happier than the average uh, people. Than the average, people who are married are uh, more miserable than um, people who are not are not, are not married. Well, yes, why not? It could be that there are correlations between those those variables, but it does not definitely not mean that there is a causation between the two. It does not mean that if I will shave my hair, then I'll get more money, or if I will get another wife, then I'll be more happy. Does not mean that at all. This is just an observation of certain data un under, under certain, certain circumstances that we need to, uh, um, to just to maybe to understand, to, to understand why, why it's happening. And we will, we will do a lot of those correlations uh, afterwards. Um, I will not go into the details of this, um, of, of, of this graph because it shows how, how we data people, we, um, we understand or we deal with data. Remember, this is just an, the, the introduction for the for, for the data analysis, and we will we will have a lot of um, a, a lot of things to, to speak about. Um, it, it simply says that when you have uh, a data, you just uh, you, you you try to understand it, you try to to to, to describe what what's in it, and uh, some other people will try to um, uh, to break it down into small pieces in order to understand it uh, to understand it more i'll get into the, the much of the details in the in the course of the, of the course afterwards but i'm here i'm just showing you the power of uh, data analysis or graphics or graphical data analysis for example this is um, a graph that shows the um, the flow of migration from uh, one country to another all around the world and it's arranged in a, in a circular uh, graph we call this a circular graph so we have here Europe, former Soviet Union, West Asia, South Asia, East Asia, Southeast Asia, Oceania, Africa, and North America. Then you have lines and you have numbers uh, on it. Um, and, the, and those lines, I mean, the thickness of the line shows the, the flow of migrants between uh, one, uh, uh, one, one country to another. Of course, we've, we, I mean, it's what's projected is the ma majority of the countries, not every, not, not all the countries, but it can show you a lot of information. I mean, if you look into this graph, if you look into it uh, uh, for like 15 minutes, sometimes I sit in front of those graphs for like half an hour, and I will be able to extract a lot, a lot, a lot of information out of this uh, graph. Let's take an example. Uh, um, Africa, uh, yes, I see Egypt, oh, I see Egypt here. So if you look at Egypt here, the amount, uh, sorry, uh, the majority of, of people going out of Egypt, they are going to United Arab Emirates. And the scale is about uh, 2 millions. So there is about one point, uh, one point something uh, uh, million people going to uh, United Arab Emirates. And this is the major uh, 
uh, I would say consumption uh, of of migrants going from uh, from Egypt. No one is migrating to Egypt because there are no uh, lines going into Egypt, but people are migrating from uh, from Egypt. Let's take um, 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 another country with, where we have people coming in and people going out. So here in Canada, for example, you have people going out to Italy. This is interesting. Okay. You have people going out to Italy. You have people coming in from Pakistan. You have people coming in from Philippines. You have people coming in those from East Asia. You have people coming in from India. So those are the people that are coming into Canada. And those are people that are going out of Canada. If you look into um, um, Philippines, Philippines, most of the people go to United States. Uh, some people go to Emirates. Some of them go to uh, Saudi Arabia and Italy as well. And Canada, we've mentioned that before. And then you have small lines here that you can look into, into it. So, I mean, looking into such a graph like this, I mean, you can imagine the amount of data that is behind that graph. I mean, a huge table of, of, of people, of, sorry, of, of, of numbers of people going in and going out and, uh, and so on. And then with this, I would not say simple graph, but with a, with a one graph, one complicated graph like this one, you are able to see a lot of information. And this is actually the power of data analysis. We don't have any equations here. We don't have any um, AX1 plus BX2 plus CX3. We don't have any, any of that. We just have numbers and we just have graphics that are able to explain to us um, uh, a lot of things. This is, this is the, 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 the new trend uh, that you have maybe seen on, the, on, on Facebook or on, 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 the, on, on social media that is called infographics. So info, information out of graphics. And it's also a branch of, uh, of data analysis. Uh, this is another example also to, uh, to show you uh, the in one minute, uh, I mean, if you go to the internet, if you type what happens on the internet in one minute, uh, you will find a lot, of, uh, a lot of those graphs. I think this graph is dating back to 2018, maybe 2019. It's, um, it's an ever developing uh, graph. And again, you have a lot of information here. In 60 seconds, in one minute, you have uh, 100 new domains registered. Wow. You have uh, uh, 95,000 apps downloaded on uh, Android. You have 48,000 apps downloaded on, on iPhones. You have 69,000 uh, 1,500 hours of videos that are watched on Netflix. All of this is happening in 60 seconds. It's, it's amazing. I mean, you have 3 million uh, uh, share, shares on Facebook. So you can imagine the, the, the servers that you need, the, the, the amount of information, that, I mean, the amount of hardware that you need in order to store all of this and to deal with all of this. And of course, we don't feel it. I mean, when I tweet something, I don't feel that at the same minute there is like, 430,000 other tweets that are going on. I don't see that. Or when I send an email, I don't see that there is 150 other million uh, emails are being sent. Um, again, this gives us uh, an, an information about how, how big uh, the, 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 the information that uh, we, I mean, the information world that we are living in is, is uh, how, how big it is. And it can also give us uh, uh, information about the interest of people. I mean, people send email more than they tweet. Okay, this is very clear from this graph. Uh, uh, people uh, uh, send more emails than they share on Facebook. People tweet more than they share on Facebook. And people, uh, how to say, yeah, people download, I mean, there's a lot of people downloading uh, uh, apps on, on iPhone than people who are using Android. And if we get this, um, as I said before, this graph is for, two, for 2018 or 2017. I don't really remember. But if we get the, the same graph for 2019 and 2020, we will be able even to see the trends. I mean, with time, um, people are uh, using more Twitter or less Twitter. 
Is it, I mean, people are moving from Facebook to Twitter or from Twitter to Facebook or to Netflix or to, uh, sorry, to, to Instagram and when Instagram started and how is it going in the, in the, in the, in the information world. All of those are information that we really need to uh, maybe to understand. And, and again, this is the power of data analysis. We, with data analysis, we can, we can really see those, those things and, and maybe predict in the future that, okay, if, the, if in 2018, 3 million and if 2019 there were 4 million and then 2020 how much we can predict uh, th th things like that it's it, and here again uh, as i said before there are no equations it's only data it's only numbers that we are dealing with and this is the power of data and this is what we will be doing into this uh, this course um the top 10 companies by revenue per employee the, the again it's an infograph showing that uh, well, Apple is much powerful. I mean, you have more uh, uh, revenue per employee in Apple than in, in, in Facebook. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a kind of an infograph. This is again another um, an, another interesting graph that I like a lot. It shows um, the portion of the world's uh, economy, and you have here two thousand years of economy from year one until year two thousand and. 17. What is the portion of, uh, uh, I mean, where, where, what are the countries that have the, the large economies? And you will see that India in the year one had more economy than the United States. Actually, the United States didn't exist, or it exists, but maybe in, in, in a different form. And it had more economy than, uh, than France, and maybe it had more economy than France, United Kingdom, Spain, than, than all of, uh, of Europe and Japan, India was very large economy. China was large economy at that time. Then it came in the 1960s, 19, I mean, the, the, maybe the, the 20th century. In the 20th century, you had the, I mean, the United States is more or less dominating the world. I mean, the biggest, uh, uh, the biggest economy in the world uh, from here, from the 1900 until 2000, it's the biggest, uh, the biggest part. And then it's going, uh, it's going down. Now, we can actually uh, start to, to, to predict. Will, will this line continue like this? Or will this line continue horizontally? Or will this line continue to go up? This line will go up, down, where it goes. Where will it go? But definitely, the amount of information that we see in this graph worth, to, worth studying, worth knowing why. And we start actually asking questions. What happened in the 1950 that made this change? Here, why this uh, uh, from 1914 to 1950? What happened in this in, the, in, the, in this era? Is it the end of the World War II that caused all of this? The shrinkage of everyone and the explosion. Well, I'll say I'll call it explosion. Yeah, I mean expansion of the of the United States and the uh, uh, the, the shrinkage of Japan. Then Japan started to 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 expand again like uh, 1960s until maybe, uh, maybe today. We can, of course, we can relate a lot of, uh, a, a lot of questions. I'm sure that if we will have the, the price of a barrel of petrol on a graph like this, and the amount of consumption and amount of production of a barrel of petrol uh, in, a, in, a, in a graph like this, we will get a lot of interesting uh, insights and information about uh, what's going on. Again, we are not speaking equations at all. We're speaking only data. We are just looking into the data. We are trying to, to understand it, try to analyze it and try to, uh, to, to see how, how can we uh, get things out of it. Data, data, data is everywhere. I mean, uh, uh, you, maybe you, you've, you've, you, you, you've, see, you've seen that, maybe you feel it, that data is, is everywhere. Where, wherever you, you work, whenever you go, there is data around you, there is data uh, surrounding you. And there is a lot of questions that we start asking ourselves about, about the data. How to analyze it, how to, uh, how to get it, how to analyze it, how to store it, how, to, how big it is, what is the software that we need to use, what is the database that we need to, to, to store it in. I mean, a lot of, uh, of interesting in information, a lot, sorry, a lot of interesting questions that we need to ask, that we need to have answers for, and um, again, this course will be about this, uh, uh, this uh, interesting uh, topic. Now, um, I will end this show um, 
Yes. Um, I know that Dr. Ahmed has some quizzes for you to, to, to answer afterwards, but I will just give you an, um, an, an, an update about what, what will happen next. Um, we will have um, six sessions. It's 19 hours. Um, after, this, um, after, this, after this one, and in those six sessions, we will, um, we will discuss the details of uh, data analysis, how people, what are the branches of data analysis, how people are uh, treating data, what are the tools that, uh, that, that, are, that are being used. And um, I will be using uh, two main uh, tools for, uh, for, for, for this data analysis. I'll be using a software called R, um, I can show you here very rapidly, uh, very quickly. Uh, share. Yes, this is it, R. It's, um, it's a free software. It's an open source software that you can um, type commands in it and then you get uh, answers to it. So if I type one plus one, it will tell me two. So this is the answer. Of course, this is very, very easy to, to, to be done, but it's, it's, um, it's um, a tool for statistical analysis, for data analysis. We can use it for data analysis. And as I said before, it's an open source. Uh, you can download it from, um, from the internet. You just type, uh, I'll open a browser, uh, share, share. So if I go here, I'll type R, only R, and you will get the first link, which is called the R Project for Statistical Computing. And if you will go there, you will be able to download the, the software. It's free of charge, it's, it's nothing, uh, and it's up updated regularly. The last update is 22nd of June. Um, I think there is another update that's coming out uh, very, uh, very soon afterwards. The, the other tool that I'll be using in this, uh, in this call is called Tableau. And Tableau is a, a paid software. It's not a free software. It's a paid software. But if you, are, um, if you are a student at a university or attached to a university one way or another, um, and you have an email that has uh, the domain .edu in it, even if it's, I mean, I know that in Egypt, for example, we use the domain edu.eg to, to say for Cairo University, for example, it's chi.edu.eg. If you have a domain in your email that is .edu. .something or .edu as in the US, you can have the software, the, the, the Tableau desktop for free. You can download it. I mean, you, you have to go through a, a registration process and they will ask you for the email and they will verify the email and then you can get the software for free. And it's very, 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 very powerful software, very powerful tool. For those who, who, who cannot, there is another, uh, another solution, which is called Tableau Online. And Tableau Online is the same software, and you can use it. It's free of charge as well. You can use it. I mean, you just have to re register for it, and you can use it as much as you want. The only uh, uh, limitation is that you cannot uh, uh, save your files locally. You have to save your files on the, on the cloud, on the Tableau uh, server. And uh, of course, I mean, a lot of people have access to it. So um, you cannot just save it to yourself. You cannot just do an analysis without being connected to the internet, but it has all the, uh, all the functionalities of Tableau. I mean, it's, it's really a, a marvelous tool. This is the tool that I, I used uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, 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 to analyze the data. And again, I'll go back to it to, to, to finish the, the, the the webinar. This is just um, getting the data source of um, the form. You see it here: form responses. This is the form responses. This is those are the responses that I had from from you. So it's a Google sheet that I started analyzing. How much people do we have? We can uh, actually. It's it's. Um, I can update the the query. So we have one thousand six hundred eighty three people that are in the, that have registered, then this is the, the pattern of registration. When people register, so we have, uh, for example, um, 297 people registered on the July 18th, and you have 
229 people registered on July uh, 20th and so on and so forth. So the registration going up and down. This is the countries. And this is the, uh, uh, the date of birth of, of, of the people. And uh, the, as, as, I, as, I said, as I said at the beginning, the specialization and so on and so forth. We will, we will of course, learn about all of those uh, du uh, du during the course. So whether you will be using uh, Tableau online or whether you will succeed to have Tableau uh, free of charge or you pay for it if, you're, if, you, if, you, if you can, then uh, uh, we will be using throughout this, uh, the, the, this course. The next time that we will, uh, we will meet, as far as I understood, will be on next Tuesday at 6 p.m. Cairo local time. Oh yes, and this is the poll that I forgot about. It's the it's the third poll. Maybe at, at, we can we can launch it at the, at the end. Um, and um, the question is, what was the law discovered by Archimedes when he said Eureka? Did he discover the law of flotation or the law of density? Another minute, another thirty seconds. Okay. Ten seconds to go. Okay. So sixty two, uh, sixty one percent of the people said that it's the low flotation. Thirty nine people said that the low density. Uh, it's actually flotation, it's actually buoyancy. And he used he used the the, the, the the flotation in order to to understand the density and the volume of the of the, of the water that is moved from uh, one uh, place to to another. Um, and you can of course read about this interesting story that he had. Uh, actually, the king had um, had asked to has asked someone to uh, to make for him um, a crown and then um, a crown of gold. And he was not sure that this crown is made of solid uh, gold or not. So he asked Archimedes, Archimedes to, to, uh, to tell him, to test it. And Archimedes came with that, uh, with that law at that time. You can read about this uh, interesting, uh, interesting topic all over the internet, of course, I mean, uh, in, your, uh, in your free time. Uh, we have um, a number of quizzes for this, uh, for, for this course that um, I, I leave it actually up to uh, Mariam and Dr. Ahmed to, to tell you about them. I'm, I'm not specialized at all in, in, in that, but I would like to go and answer maybe uh, some of the yeah, questions. So thank you, Doctor, for this really interesting Mariam. and enlightening session. Now we'll begin with the questions. So the first question is, uh, is that, how can we start a career in data analysis and data science after doing petroleum engineering? And is it considered an alternative field to petroleum? Uh, well, it's not, it's not actually considered as, a, as an alternate uh, field for petroleum engineers, but uh, data, analysis, data, analy data analy analytics or data analysis uh, people are actually, um, I mean, you, you can, I mean, if you have a career, if you will build a career in data analytics or data analysis, you can actually work in, in anything. I mean, I myself, I'm a mining engineer, but I have made some analysis with colleagues in the stock market in Egypt, in petroleum engineering, of course, in mining, in, in uh, health, uh, in the health uh, uh, discipline, I mean, in different, different, uh, uh, the different places. How to start a career um, is by educating yourself, is by learning how to do data analysis, by, of course, getting interested and then uh, um, educating yourself I'll, I cannot promise you that after this course, you will be um, a data analy analysis, analyst, uh, but I can promise you that you will get to know what is it about this uh, data analysis. And then there is a zillion of uh, courses and books that are on the internet and courses online that you can uh, go and, and try. Okay, thank you, doctor. Uh, the second question is, uh, if there is no correlation between two variables, can data analysis be applied? 
Um, well, this is a, a, a very early question. I prefer to answer this question maybe uh, after we go into the next, um, the, the next phase. Because um, in, in the world that we are living in today, we don't usually work with only two variables. It's very naive to think that we can uh, make an analysis with, two, uh, with only two variables. Usually we work with like hundreds of variables or, or yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, tens of variables. So if there is no correlation between variable A and variable B, then we will definitely find another correlation between that variable A and variable C or T or, or E or F. So we can, yeah, we, we, we have a lot of workarounds for that. Okay, thank you. Uh, also another question, uh, can we apply data analysis using Excel? Um, well, um, the basic thing of data analysis is, is making calculations. Uh, yes, you can. Um, Excel is, is a very powerful tool and it makes a lot of, um, a lot of interesting, um, it can give you a lot of interesting insights. And there is also a tool by Microsoft called the Microsoft Business Intelligence that also does a lot of things similar to, uh, to Tableau. But um, I always like to think of every software as a specialized in one thing. So for me, Excel is specialized in tables and uh, calculations and maybe database, but that's it. Then if you want to make high order uh, uh, data analysis, you need to have another tool. Okay, thank you. And uh, finally, uh, if two things correlate to one another and it's a causation relationship, how do, how do to differentiate which one is the cause and which one is the impact? Well, the, the cause and the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the impact is the, uh, yeah, I mean, um, <laughs> um, if, I mean, usually when you do data analysis, we, we don't work with, with variables that, that are V1, V2, V3, V4. We use the variables as their names. And with the context of the analysis, we will be definitely able to know which is the cause and which is the effect. Okay, so, so uh, thank you, doctor, uh, for this uh, session, for this interesting session. And um, I want to highlight that this session uh, was being recorded and it will, it will be uploaded uh, to Pio Petro YouTube channel. You can uh, rewatch it if you want. And uh, finally, um, don't forget to join the Google Classroom for the quantitative data analysis course. Uh, the codes of the classroom are posted on the Arab Oil and Gas Academy page, Facebook page, and it, uh, they have uh, been also sent by email. And uh, so kindly, once you uh, join the classroom, um, only one classroom per course, uh, kindly fill the personal information document and uh, submit the required quizzes. And also uh, the final exam, which, which will be held at the end of this uh, course, and the, the date of the final exam would be posted also on the Facebook page. So make sure to submit all these, otherwise you won't be able to receive your certificate. Uh, so thank you again, doctor, and hope you guys enjoyed this session and uh, have a nice day. Thank you very much, Mariam. And um, again, I wish you um, good time. Uh, I mean, good health and prosperity in this difficult time in Lebanon. Thank you, thank you for the support.